So what do you do if you're out in the woods and something happens and you have to spend the night? Whether you got lost, a medical emergency comes up, you need to survive the night. This is absolutely essential whether you want to learn to hunt to feed your family from the land or whether you're just pursuing uh, outdoor recreation. I've got a real treat for you in today's video as well because my good friend Caleb Musgrave from Canadian Bushcraft is going to be taking over the Chris Outdoors channel and doing a high level overview of the essentials of being able to get through a night in the woods. By the way, this is the Chris Outdoors YouTube channel. We're all about connecting people with the land as well as building your self-reliance and teaching people to hunt and this is actually part one of a series that we have inside of our hunters journey program which is a mentorship for new hunters wanting to learn you can check out the whole rest of the video and a whole bunch of other videos around hunting as well as check out our community at www.thehuntersjourney.com but for now i'm going to pass it over to caleb my name is caleb musgrave i'm a survival instructor from central ontario and this is the hunters journey survival primer in this video we're going to be going over survival priorities as well as how to actually set your yourself up to survive. Hunters make up a large portion, sometimes up to or upwards of 25% of missing people in Canada. We're often the people that are walking off the beaten path, tracking and chasing down game. B, we are often the people that only go out during the hunting season, so we don't necessarily know our neighborhood in the woods very well uh, compared to hikers that are gonna be carrying maps and compasses all the time, staying to designated trails and paths. And the final part that can often cause a lot more trouble is we wear camouflage, so we're harder to see when they come looking for us. So we can get lost in the woods if you get yourself injured, break a leg, twist an ankle, get stranded because your machine breaks down, or you physically do not know where you are. Hunters make up a large portion of that. And so I think it's very, very critical that we learn some survival skills before we go in the woods. So before we can get into anything about survival kits and all the fun little toys we like to talk about when we get into survival, we need to talk about our mentality, our survival priorities, all the actual mental, psychological aspects before we do anything physical. Survival is 90% psychological, only 10% physical. A lot of things are gonna impact you mentally before they impact you physically. And so most people who get lost realize they're lost only a couple hours before that sun hits the horizon. So we have a very short window of time to get a lot of things done. So when we realize we are, we're lost, we need to prioritize as much as possible. The first thing I like to do is follow the STOP acronym. It's a military acronym uh, referring to secure, think, observe, plan, STOP. We're gonna secure a position, make sure we're in a safe place. We don't wanna be in the middle of a, of a flooding river. We don't wanna be below a bunch of wildfire. We wanna get ourselves into a safe location as quickly as possible and secure ourselves. And for me, that means getting down and sitting down somewhere dry. The reason I like to sit down is because our biggest muscles on our body are in our legs. And when you start having adrenaline rushing and you're having that panic attack of realizing you're lost, you go into what some people refer to the flight or fight response. And we don't want to flight. We don't want to start running. Many people that start running and trying to find themselves getting, they try to do self rescue. They get themselves more and more lost. They get themselves deeper and deeper into problems. So we want to stay put. So the first part of the acronym, the S is secure. The second part is think, figure out what went wrong, whether it's because you went through the ice or you got turned around or whatever it may be. Think it through, figure out what happened. Don't get into the woe is me attitude, but you got to critically analyze what happened so that you can start to make a plan. The next part is the O in stop, which is observe. Observe your surroundings and observe the things that are on your body. I want to look for resources. I want to look for friends out here. I want to look for things that are going to help me. And of course, I wanna check for what I have on me to help me get those things and attain the resources I require to survive. And the final part is the P, and that stands for plan. I have to make a game plan of what I gotta do. I need to prioritize what I need. Do I need food? Do I need to get out right now? Do I need medication? Do I need to make a fire? Do I need to make shelter? What do I need to know and what do I need to have right now? How much time do I have left? That's part of the observation check. How much time you have left before sunset and all those kinds of things and put a plan together and then you need to act on that plan. So the STOP acronym is a great way to begin your survival saga. The second part to that is your priorities. There are five major priorities and a bunch of little minor priorities, and those all depend on the context of your situation. But we're gonna focus on the first primary five priorities. The first one is your mental health. You need to prepare yourself for what's gonna go down. Part of that is reducing your panic, reducing your stress. 
getting calm and getting what many people refer to a positive mental attitude. I'm going to survive. I'm going to get out of here. Those who survive have the willpower to survive. I have that willpower in me. We come from thousands of generations of people that lived on this landscape. It's no different now. I'm the same species of what they were 10,000 years ago. I can do this. The second priority is fire. I don't care what the scenario is, fire is the next most important thing in my eyes, especially here in Canada in fall and early winter. The main reason is if I only have a couple of hours of daylight or less to get everything done, I may not be able to build an adequate shelter, but I can definitely get all the firewood, all the kindling, all the tinder I need and start putting together a fire making um, project get myself my fire made, get it going, and if need be, just sleep by a fire. If I am dressed adequately, and I have the proper kind of clothing for the conditions that I'm in, such as in my condition, I have uh, several layers of wool and I've got a waterproof, windproof, that's an important part, shell on the outside. I've got warm mitts, a warm hat, all that kind of stuff on me. I can get by if it's raining, as long as I have a hot enough fire to keep me warm. It's better to be hot and wet than wet and cold. So fire is my next priority. Fire can scare away the boogeyman. Fire can help me purify or at least disinfect water. Fire can become a signal for people who are looking for me. Fire casts light into the darkness so I can work around my fire while I start trying to make myself more comfortable by building that shelter. All those kinds of things fire can do for me. A shelter without fire and not adequate enough sleeping equipment, I don't have a sleeping bag, blankets, all that kind of stuff. Without fire, it's very difficult, but my third priority, therefore, is going to be shelter. The first stage of shelter is our clothing. We have to have the adequate clothing to handle any situation in the environment we're going to be in at the time of year that we're going to be in. In summertime, it's going to be mostly about the wet and the heat. This time of year, it's about the wet and the cold, which is a much scarier combination in our region. It can get very cold right after being very rainy and wet, and that can make you very, very miserable all the way to dying of hypothermia. So shelter starts with our clothing. The second stage of that is we build a adequate shelter that's gonna protect us from the cold ground, protect us from wind, protect us from rain. And with a fire, we will be able to re-radiate our bodies with warm air so that we don't have to worry so much about radiative heat loss. There's a whole lot of other aspects to that, but that's the main gist of it. Beyond that, if we realize that we're going to be out for more than a couple of days, that's when we can get into making ourselves a much more comfortable shelter that can give us a better sleep and make sure that we are well rested so that we can handle the stresses and the rigors of survival. That's not necessary on the first night, but it will definitely become necessary after a couple of days out there. Now, most survival scenarios in Canada are finished within 72 hours of the beginning of your survival scenario because search and rescue can usually find you. If you're in the northern parts of Canada, such as the Northwest Territories, the Yukon or Nunavut, that can actually be a much longer time because you're a much smaller object and a much larger area to look for. Here in Ontario, most of Ontario, it's most likely they're gonna find where you started off, where you left your vehicle, and they're gonna start looking for you, uh, for you from there. So because of that, our next priority has to be water, not food. Water is our next biggest priority. The human body on average requires about two liters of water. For some people like myself, it's a whole lot more than that. And you need to make sure that that water is clean. You can't just drink from a puddle. You can't just drink from a swamp. There's a lot of different bacterium, viruses, protozoa, and worms that can get into your body and wreak havoc on you. There's even some forms of bacteria such as cholera that can kill you in a matter of hours. So the whole adage of I'd rather drink the water now and suffer later is not a good idea. You want to stay hydrated, but you want to make sure that that water is as clean as possible. The final part of our five priorities, our fifth priority is rescue. We want to get the hell out. We want to get home to our dogs, our cats, our spouses, our family, our doll collection, whatever it may be. We want to get back to that. So we've got to get out of here and self-rescue, AKA walking out is not ideal. So what we want to do is start setting up signals, getting ourselves ready to signal for help with whistles, uh, mirrors, smoke signals, anything we can think of, high visibility to grab attention from our rescuers. And that is the final part of our five priorities. Again, mental, fire, shelter, water, and rescue. Those are our five priorities. So because of those priorities of ours, the five priorities, following our STOP acronym, following our everything else we've done in our mental toolkit, now we can focus on the physical toolkit. And my survival kit is basically built off of the priorities that we need. So the first thing I have is, of course, my mindset. I've prepared myself. I've brought the right equipment. 
So I'm already, already done on priority one. Priority two is fire. In my kit, I have a fire kit that is very basic and light, but very dependable. The next priority is shelter. I have several options for shelter. I don't always carry all of them, but each one of these components is a great option. I have a tarp with some cord. I have a bivy sack right here that is a reflective bivy sack. And I have right here uh, a reflective tent, almost like a pop tent that's got some mylar or aluminized nylon on the edges of it to help bounce heat back into me. Beyond shelter, we have water. One option is a cook pot to boil water. It's one of the simplest low-tech options when it comes down to it. Very difficult to fail unless you actually damage the pot itself. Another option is what's called a life straw. These are a filter that you suck water through. I'm not a huge fan of these, but they are an option. Beyond water, we need to get into rescue, and that's a pretty simple one. Rescue is gonna be sound, mirrors of some sort. So I have a compass out here that has a mirror on it that I use for ba taking bearings, but I can also use as a signal mirror. And then of course, everything I have has in some form or another high visibility. If my shelter is blue or orange, it's going to stand out. If I wear high visible clothing and carry my stuff in high visible bags, that is gonna help me out a lot because they're gonna be able to see me. And finally, of course, if I have fire, I can make a smoke signal to grab attention from people. So I have as many options as possible. Every single kit component you have should have some redundancies or some fallback options. I have both a lighter and a ferro rod. I have a cook pot and a filter, all these different things. The final thing that I add to my survival kit outside of a first aid kit is illumination. I like to have a headlamp with me at least, if not a flashlight in my bag as well. And I like to have the ability to charge it. So there's a, uh, there's a solar powered battery bank here, a power bank here with a cable. This allows me to work later into the night to make sure I got everything I need. The final other additional toolkit that I'll have in here is cutting implements, a knife, or a saw or preferably both. So I hope you can see from that video what a wealth of knowledge Caleb is and you're already starting to feel a little bit more confident around what you would need to do if you had to unexpectedly spend a night in the woods. Now, if you're wanting to learn how to hunt and you want a team of mentors to be able to support you in that journey, uh, people that believe in stewardship, ethics, um, and are respectful to all people coming in, you may wanna check out the rest of this video as well as our entire community and course over at www.thehuntersjourney.com.